Hi, everyone. Welcome to Grace for Today. I am Pastor Aaron Perdue here at Caris Christian Center in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Thanks so much for joining me today. I have a great teaching in store for you. I'm continuing my series called The Blessed Life. This is a really awesome series. It's really encouraging, very powerful, great revelation in this teaching. If you'd like to order the entire four-part series on the blessed life, I go into great detail on, on many aspects of the blessing of the Lord. If you'd like to order this four-part series, give us a call here at the church. We'd be happy to ship it to you. Maybe you'd even like to order it and have it shipped to a friend of yours as a gift. It's a powerful teaching, um, great revelation that can change your life. If you believe on Jesus Christ, you are are blessed, period. You are blessed and you are blessed abundantly. If God gave you Jesus, he would give anything to you that you need. Um, I, I want to kind of dive in um, right off the bat talking about the blessing of work. I talked a little bit yesterday about how to walk out the blessing in your life. First of all, you need to believe it. You need to have that revelation that you are blessed, that Jesus Christ is in you. And because of that, you are blessed. But you also need to um, you know, speak it and also to walk it out. And how do we walk out that blessing? Part of walking out that blessing is by giving, but also by setting your hand to something, by going to work. And um, uh, let me just ask you this question. Uh, when I first became a pastor about five years ago, um, someone uh, came into me for counseling and, and uh, uh, brought up something kind of interesting. So if you have your Bible, turn to Genesis 3. Genesis 3, verse 17. Genesis 3, verses 17. So I have this question for you. Is work a curse? And someone came in for counseling. A man, um, he was married, had a child. Um, and he brought in this, um, brought in this verse. Genesis 3, 13. Th sorry, Genesis 3, 17 through 19. So let's read, read this here. It's, this is about the curse upon Adam when Adam sinned, uh, turned away from God, ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Um, there's actually a curse that came upon Adam. It's spoken here in Genesis 3, verse 17 through 19. So uh, I want to ask you this question, is work a curse? So it says here in Genesis 3, verse 17, it says, Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and you have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake, and toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life, both thorns and thistles, it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field, and the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground, for out of it you are taken. For dust you are, and to dust you shall return. So there's a curse spoken. Um, you're going to be cursed. In toil, you're going to work the ground. In toil, you're going to eat out of it. There's a curse associated with work here. So this man um, came to me. Um, he refused to work. He was married, had a kid. He refused to work. Um, he was homeless. And he said, he told me, you know, working, uh, it, it's a curse. You know, I, I shouldn't work because uh, there's a curse upon work and I'm not going to work. And um, he actually told me um, when I was you know, counseling him for 30 minutes or so, told me uh, I just moved here, just became a pastor. Uh, like, like I said, um, God, God um, blessed me. I was able to start a business buying and selling watches on eBay while I was getting my doctorate in music, going to grad school, making $10,000 a month profit, saving a lot of it. I was able to buy a house when I moved here, had a nice house. Um, especially just for starting out in the ministry, starting out right out of school, um, no debt, owned a nice house. This guy said, um, you know, work is a curse, but if you're a true Christian, you know, Pastor Aaron, if you're a true Christian, you should let me and my family live in your house. And I just kind of thought about it for a few seconds, and I said, well, you know, I, I can't let you live in my house because I actually worked to, to earn the money to buy my house. And if you believe that work is a curse, you can't live in my house because I worked to, to be able to afford this house. So no, you cannot live in my house. Uh, man, it's really important how we interpret scripture. So he took this scripture, um, didn't look at it through the lens of Jesus and said, work is a curse, period. You know, if you believe on Jesus, you are not cursed. You are blessed. The work of your hands is not cursed. The work of your hands is blessed. Jesus Christ um, took the curse of the law upon himself. That way the blessing might come upon you. And the blessing says this. Deuteronomy 28, 
verse 8, the Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hands. So when I read that and I know that I'm blessed, that Jesus Christ wants me to bless, that he paid for me on the cross to take the curse upon him so I might be blessed. When I understand that doctrinally, when I understand that from scripture, when I properly interpret the scripture, looking at it um, through, through what Jesus has done, looking at through what Jesus has done in his death, burial, and resurrection, don't try to interpret scripture apart from the cross, apart from Jesus, apart from the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Jesus Christ came to redeem me from the curse. And because I know that I'm not cursed, I am blessed. I need to set my hand to something. I need to work. I need to get some storehouses. I need to do something. So work is not a curse. Um, and you really need to be careful how you interpret scripture, uh, especially, you know, as a believer, but as a pastor, I could take that Genesis 3 verse 17, you know, and just pull things out of context and say, you know, Genesis 3 17, Adam you know, then Adam, he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I have commanded you, you know, you shall like, curse it. You know, well, I could say, well, Adam heeded the voice of his wife. So, and God rebuked him for that. So I could take that and say, well, that's my marriage advice for the day. I'm not going to heed the voice of my wife. Otherwise I'll be cursed. Man, that is crazy. Don't pull stuff out of context to make it fit your own crazy agenda. Uh, if I, if I, pulled that verse on my wife, Heather, and said, well, I can't listen to your voice. I can't listen to, to what you're saying. Otherwise, a curse will come upon me. That would be crazy because that's not properly interpreting scripture. I know that my wife, uh, she, uh, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. I know there's a blessing associated with, with the wife that God has given me. So I'm not going to use scripture, pull it out of context and use it to manipulate and uh, just come up with crazy doctrine. Um, so there, work is not a curse. You cannot take Genesis 3, 17 through 19 and say that work is cursed. You are blessed. And because you are blessed, there's a blessing upon what you set your hands. So you need to get your work, get to work. You need to teach your children the blessing of work. Good things happen when you go to work. My dad taught me that when I was a kid. Good things happen to you when you go to work. You know, we are all a part of a team. We all need to contribute. All of us, I believe in heaven, we're all going to have jobs to do. We're going to have things to set our hand to in heaven. Work is not a curse. When we get to heaven, we're just not going to sit on a lazy boy, sit on a cloud and watch uh, Netflix all day. We need to get to work. Um, you know, some of you just aren't doing much and that's, that's uh, part of the reason why you're not really getting anywhere. There is a blessing associated with work. Uh, several years ago, my dad, Pastor Lawson, uh, taught a series here at Karis Christian Center um, on, on, on parenting. And um, I have two younger brothers. We're all two years apart, um, very successful in our respective fields. And he actually just reached out to us and said, hey, give me the, the top 10 list of things I taught you growing up. So all of us came up with our top 10 things that our dad, my mom and dad taught us when we were growing up. And uh, we all worked on those t uh, top 10 lists on our own. And the number one thing, each one, each one of us, myself, my brother Andrew, my brother Peter, my brother Andrew, um, he's a multimillionaire and engineer in the oil and gas industry. He, he's a, a project manager, oversees the, the, the plans, the development, the build out of, uh, you know, uh, uh, natural gas plants that, that, you know, cost $300 million to build. He operates them, runs these things, oversees those things. My youngest brother, Peter, went to Princeton University, is now, um, you know, uh, an executive for the Burger King Corporation. He's over all the Burger King in Asia. Um, the number one thing we wrote down that my dad taught us was uh, the value of work, a strong work ethic. Um, just a couple months ago, um, I had a gentleman from our church. He helps here on the security team. He actually has his own landscaping company, an older gentleman uh, by the name of John. He, uh, he came and helped me uh, with all this landscaping at my house. I have a really big um, yard, lots of landscaping, um, and we trimmed everything, cut down some dead trees, some really big dead trees. And um, he just saw me. I told him, you chop things down, you trim things up, and I'm going to come after you and, and uh, you know, clean them up. Uh, pick up after you. You just go with the, your trimmer, go with your buzzer. You know what you're doing. I'll just come up and clean up. And um, I, I remember we cut down this one big tree right in the front of our house. 
It was a pretty big tree. We, My wife and I have lived in this house for about a year. I didn't want to cut it down. I grew up in Eastern Colorado where, you know, nothing grows. You have to really work hard to get things to grow, work really hard. And here in Colorado, you have to work hard to get grass to grow. It's almost a desert, uh, a high mountainous desert climate here in Colorado. It's hard to get things to grow. So I don't, I don't want to just go chop trees down. My wife is from Tennessee where things grow everywhere. You know, just uh, when I visited her, family there in Tennessee, driving down the highway, they have these giant um, tractors with like four giant blades just mowing down trees next to power lines along the highways. They have to cut things down. So she has the mindset, I want to chop things down. I have the mindset, I don't want to chop anything down. I want to try to make things grow. But you know, after a year, we decide this thing really isn't, doesn't have much life in it. It'd be better to, to, to chop it down and um, put it in a fire. So we cut this big tree down. It's some kind of weird willow tree that just had tons of a uh, you know, every year it would, it would shoot out these three three foot vines with these big leaves on it, and then and then in the winter those vines would die, and the next year it would shoot out um, you know new vines. So it, it ended up becoming looking like a giant tumbleweed, like this twenty foot round big ball of tumbleweed. So we cut that thing down and uh, try to chop it in pieces. We thought it would take. I, I borrowed a pickup um, to haul things off. We thought um, and it might take just a. Uh, three or four pickup loads just to get rid of this tree hauling off that dead tree. But what I did, I would take those chunks of that tree, that giant tumbleweed tree, put them in the truck. And I, I took my shovel and I just whacked them because they're like these kind of thin, you know, vines that had dried. I just whack it and smash it and mush it down. And uh, John, uh, you know, this, this gentleman here at the church, he just saw me going at it, uh, whacking this thing down. I, I shrunk that tree down. We thought I'd take four loads. I shrunk it down to just half, half of the bed of the truck. And he said, you know what? I can tell you are Pastor Lawson's son. He could tell just from how hard I was uh, working doing manual labor. He can tell I had a hard work ethic. That was actually a big compliment to me uh, for him to say, I can tell you are Pastor Lawson's son. He, he was saying, you have a, a strong work ethic. Several years ago when we were uh, building our first church building, um, it was actually at a property right across the parking lot from Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College, their old location here in Carter Springs. Uh, we were building our, our first uh, church building there. Um, I came home from college. I, I was working on my master's at Rice. I came home that summer to work. My brother Peter uh, also came home that summer, who's now you know the executive for Burger King. He came home that summer. He just finished his first year at Princeton. He came home. Uh, he was training, doing a lot of weightlifting for for uh, football at Princeton. We both came to help, you know, work for my dad, help with the, the build out on that church. And, um, you know, basically most of the summer we were just outside with a shovel digging uh, trenches for the power lines in the parking lot. And um, we were, I think we just got 10 bucks an hour, you know, a, a great salary there for, for doing hard work all day with a shovel. And it was a really hot, dry summer here in Colorado. I, I think one day it got close to 100 degrees, but it was a really hot, dry day. We've been working all day, shoveling nonstop all day. And uh, we just sat down in the dirt uh, there in our trench, just covered in dirt. And uh, it was hard work. I was covered in sweat. It was all, all that dirt was just sticking to me. My brother Peter just said, hey, I have a quarter in my pocket. I'll give you this quarter if you take this dirt clod and stick it in your mouth. And I said, I was so covered in dirt, so so tired, exhausted, sweaty. I'm like, sure, I have nothing to lose. I just took that dirt clod, stuck in my mouth. Uh, right when I was doing that, my dad came out and he saw us sitting down there on the job, you know, uh, wasting that hard, you know, hard earned money, $10 an hour he's going to pay us. And he, he got really upset. He grabbed that shovel and just started shoveling as fast as he could. He said, I want to show you how to shovel. You need a shovel like this. Um, kind of funny story, but he did teach us to have a strong work ethic. We need to teach our, our children the blessing of work. We're all a part of a team. We all need to contribute. Um, you know, if you want to go into ministry, if you want to be a strong minister, a strong pastor, a strong leader, you need to be a hard worker. The Bible says in Ephesians 4, verse 11 and 12, that he himself, Jesus Christ himself, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. You know, my, my number one leadership rule is this. Keep showing up. If you want to be a strong leader, be successful, be blessed in life, especially be a strong leader, you got to show up. Keep showing up. If you keep showing up, you will get promoted. Just keep showing up. A lot of people uh, fall 
fall off, uh, but don't, don't fall off. Keep doing what God has called you to do. Keep, keep being where God has called you to be. Keep serving where God has called you to serve. You know, keep working hard at your job. Keep serving your family. Keep honoring God. You know, don't do things for yourself. Don't do things as men pleases, but do everything is unto the Lord. Do everything with a heart is unto the Lord. Uh, and God will bring you promotion. Promotion doesn't come from the east, from the west, from the south. It comes from the Lord. Promotion always comes to the Lord. God see, sees you. You know, your, your family might not see you. Your spouse might not really see all the hard work you're doing. Your, your boss might not really take notice of you, but God sees you and he has ways to bring you promotion. So keep a good attitude. Keep working hard. Keep doing what God has called you to do and good things are going to happen. One of my teachers in music um, taught me that, you know, classical music is a very tough field, uh, takes a lot of hard work. I would practice three or four hours a day for many years. Um, but she, she said it this way, success is when opportunity meets um, preparation. So success is when opportunity meets preparation. God will bring you um, breakthroughs of opportunity, but you need, to, you need to be prepared. A lot of people forget the preparation part. Success is when opportunity meets promotion. Good things happen when you keep going to work. So keep going to work. There is a blessing associated with work. Work is not a curse. Keep going to work. And also be around people who have a blessed mentality. Be around people who are not victims, people who are pessimistic, people who are just uh, speaking death, speaking the curse, just complaining and murmuring and bitter. Um, you know, the blessing rubs off on people. You need to go around people who have a blessed mentality. Um, the blessing, it literally rubs off. You need to go to a church where, where they believe in the blessing of the Lord. You need to, to have friends who believe in the blessing of the Lord. Uh, you know, that, that blessing, the blessing rubs off. I was thinking about this. There is actually an anointing of blessing. And when we read the Bible, uh, read about different priests. We talked about Melchizedek in a few, uh, in a few of these lessons. Um, Melchizedek blessed Abram. You can read about the blessing. We might, if we have a little bit of time, we might dive into the blessing of Aaron, the Levitical blessing. Um, <clears throat> even Jesus, our great high priest, these priestly blessings, they, there is an anointing of blessing and they could anoint others with blessing. The priest would bless other people, but there's an anointing with blessing. The blessing rubs off. The word anointing in Hebrew it's, it's the word mashak. The word anointing means, means to smear or to rub. So, um, you know, you might be at a church where people have prayed over you, with, where the pastor or the elders have prayed over you, maybe for healing, for blessing. They, they take oil and anointed you with it. They've rubbed it on you. The blessing of the Lord can, can rub off on you. So hang out where the blessing is. It will rub off on you. My youngest brother, Peter, again, who went to Princeton, who's now uh, a top executive for the Burger King Corporation. He lives in Singapore. He's over all the Burger Kings in Asia. I was talking to him once about um, you know, his college education. He went to Princeton University and he said this about his college education. He said, the greatest thing about my education wasn't the classes or even the professors. It was the network you get to be a part of. The people that you hang out with, uh, kind of what rubs off on you, that relational thing that just rubs off on you, that atmosphere of excellence that was there. Um, that rubs off on you. So him saying, you know, the greatest thing about my education wasn't necessarily the classes or the professors. That's, that's a pretty big statement coming from someone who went to Princeton University. I, uh, I got to visit him uh, on one occasion. I sat in on one of his classes, uh, uh, an economics class. It was just, I think, 20 or 30 students in that class. But the professor had just won the Nobel Prize uh, in economics. And so he said, you know, the, the greatest thing about my education wasn't necessarily the classes, the professors, but it was the network that you get to be a part of. You need to, to be a part, you know, connect with ministries that believe in the blessing of the Lord that are blessed. I believe that this, this ministry, there's a huge blessing, uh, a huge blessing of increase on this ministry. I believe that grace for today, our church here, Caris Christian Center, there is a, a blessing. There is an anointing for increase on this house. There's an anointing for increase on the pastor's lot on his life, Pastor Lawson on my life, and people who really tap into it, who connect with it, um, they, they, they are blessed too. I was talking to a man just recently here, here um, 
um, who's a part of this church, part of this ministry. And um, right before uh, the COVID-19 pandemic started, he actually um, left a very secure job and launched out, started his own business. He's a vet. He left his secure secure salary job right before this pandemic started, um, took out a big loan, uh, opened up his own clinic. And uh, right when that happened, the pandemic happened, kind of a scary time to, you know, he has um, four kids. Uh, his oldest just just uh, went off to college. Uh, kind, of, kind of a scary uh, thing to step into, but uh, he's been doing it for, for over a year now. And I was talking to him and he said, um, you know, God actually d- did something awesome. Um, we, we just did our books for the first year and it, it was double what I even thought was possible. How awesome is that? That God, God can bless you for, you know, greater than what you can even think or imagine. So he was imagining, you know, one, one number for what they would bring in that year. And it actually, God, God exceeded it and even doubled it. So you need to be in an atmosphere of excellence, an atmosphere where, where, where people just have a blessed mentality. The blessing rubs off. Um, you know, big time, the blessing rubs off. I want to read about the blessing here. Um, and we talked some about the blessing that Melchizedek spoke over Abram. He said, you are blessed by the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth. When you know you are blessed by the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that's in Genesis 14, verse 19. Um, and God, God has really um, just used that verse to minister to me, to speak to me, just to help me identify with the blessing, not necessarily with, with um, what the circumstances are around you. Um, but man, when, when you understand that you are blessed by the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that really changes things. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich. He adds no sorrow, sorrows to it. The blessing of the Lord makes things happen. It brings brings about a positive change. Let's look at the blessing that Aaron was taught uh, and all the Levitical priests was taught to speak over their congregation. This is found in Numbers 6, verse 22. Let's go there. If you have your Bible, turn there to Numbers 6, verse 22. Um, Yesterday, I talked about how we need to believe the blessing and speak the blessing. This is a great blessing for you to speak every day, to confess, to believe, to speak over your own life. Number six, starting in verse 22. So it says it like this here. This is the priestly blessing, the Levitical uh, priest uh, blessing. Verse 22 in number six. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to Aaron and his son saying, this is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them. So they were, you know, they were just to to think about the blessing, they are to speak it. There is power in the spoken word. There is power in the spoken word of God. You know, God speaks and things happen. God spoke and said, let there be light and there was light. You need to speak the blessing and believe that the blessing, it's gonna come into manifestation in your life. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord bless you. That word for blessing, it, it's the Hebrew word barak. It means to kneel down. And when, when we worship God, when we kneel down, adore him, we're blessing him, but he's also blessing us. I had this picture of, of like someone um, coming before a king or a queen and kneeling down and the, the king um, takes, takes their scepter or a sword and taps him on the shoulder and, and says, you know, you are no longer this station. You are being promoted to a higher station. You are now a knight. You are now Sir, you know, Sir Aaron Purdue. Uh, when we kneel down, God, God blesses us. The Lord bless you. He promotes you. He adorns you. He taps you on the shoulder and brings promotion. When you pray, worship, bless him, kneel down, you can just get that picture that he, he is, he's also placing his hand, his favor upon you. The Lord bless you and keep you. That word keep you, it's shamar in Hebrew. It means to to guard, to protect, to watch over, to literally set a hedge around you. Now, I'd always speak this, that God, you surround me with favor like a shield. God, you are watching over me. You are keeping me. Shamar, to guard, to protect, to set a hedge around you. He's setting a hedge of favor, a hedge of protection around you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Man, when God thinks about you, his face lights up. It just beams. Man, when God, he, he, we have that deep covenant, deep relational bond. His face shines upon us. You know, I have a, a, 
a six month old daughter right now. She's just the cutest thing. Whenever I, I go, when I hear her wake up in the morning, I go get her. Her face just lights up. She loves her mommy. She loves her daddy. God loves you when he thinks about you, when you say hi to him, when you worship him, when you pray to him, when you think about God, his face just lights up. And when you think about God, when you think about Jesus, your face should just light up too. That's that covenant relationship, that, that deep, unbreakable bond we have with God. His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. That word peace, shalom, it means, you know, peace, but it means completeness, soundness, complete welfare, health, prosperity, safety, tranquility. Just that peace that comes um, from a, a deep relational covenant bond with God. And all of this, so they shall put my name on the children of Israel. How does God put his name upon you? He puts his name upon you by you being blessed. Um, don't identify with the curse. Don't accept the curse in your life. The curse, again, it includes poverty, sickness, defeat, um, just constant struggle. We need to identify with the blessing. We need to say, I am blessed by the Most High God, the possessor of, he of heaven and earth. When you identify with that, when you speak it, when you walk it out, when you take action upon it, that's how God puts his name upon you. So before we go, I want to speak this blessing one more time over everyone watching this program. Right now, I just thank you for everyone watching this program, everyone tuned in. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. You are blessed by the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth. Thank you so much for joining me today. Tune in tomorrow for another part of The Blessed Life. See you again soon. Thanks for watching Grace for Today. This broadcast is made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000. Go to www.lawsonpadu.com or write us at PO Box 63733 Colorado Springs, Colorado, 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.